Welcome back, friends. I hope that you have had a good week so far. This has been, at least according to those with whom I've been in conversation, an unseasonably warm February, complete with thunderstorms today, which I know are also uh, unseasonal uh, in terms of having these in late February, right? I think that's a later spring process. But that said, I'm happy that you could be here and tune into this, and I'm happy to reflect a little bit on this last Sunday service. As you know, it's the second of a four-part series entitled Scenes of Wilderness. I spoke a little bit the first Sunday about oceans, these magnificent, mysterious, largely unexplored realities that both open new life to us, are actually the basis of the life we have, and yet are quite unpredictable, tumultuous, and even frightening. This last Sunday I spoke about forest, and as you can imagine, they operate very similarly. In fact, in many of the world's mythologies, it's a forest setting where transformation occurs. However, in order to experience the transformation, many of the figures that you find in these mythologies have to work through and overcome some of their initial hesitation or fear about going into the forest. The forest that is full of sounds and sights and smells that are not, let us say, as similar to what a village may have produced. This is a forest which is, by definition, undomesticated. Remember our definitions of wilderness, uncultivated, uninhabited, which is to say it has a life of its own. That does not mean it is not instructive. And so this last Sunday, I tried to speak about the ways in which forest communicates something of this season and of God's call to us and for us in our lives. Towards the end of the service, I made a reference to this beautiful little film, and though I didn't get to talk much about it during the Sunday service, I figure today is as good a time as any to share a little bit more with you. The animated film, I have a five-year-old, so I watch many of these now, is called Wolf Walkers, and it describes a situation where a city is being built, it's walled off, indicating, of course, a measure of fear by the townsfolk because of the wilderness that harbors wolves and all sorts of things that frighten the townsfolk. And, of course, the stories that are being circulated about what exists in the woods and how frightening the woods are. The main character in this story, or one of the main characters, ventures into the woods one day. Now, she's been told throughout her life that the woods and the wolves that live in the woods are to be feared and ultimately subjugated, dominated, displaced, extinguished. Well, because of a relationship that develops between her and this wolf walker friend, she experiences a new sense of life and a new frame through which to view her life. And she realizes that the real villain, the real culprit, the, the reason that there has been such tension and such fear and such horror is because of the narratives that are being circulated in the city, this deep residual fear about the forest. She comes away ultimately not only redeeming her family and the townsfolk, but saving the day and saving the forest, because the forest saved her. I hope that during this season of Lent, as you experience yourself plunged into the wilderness, maybe it's an ocean if you've traveled or are traveling, maybe it's a forest if you've gone for some walks during this unseasonal weather, Maybe it's something else, but I hope that in some way you experience a measure of uplift and salvation and sustenance from going into those places that you may have been told to fear and watch out for, but which we know and are promised also provide us with reason, purpose, 
passion, and sustenance. As I always say, the season of Lent is about reconnecting with our source, being humbled, connecting to the earth. I wish you that this week, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.